Hey folks, it's William with All Solar Texas. If you are currently designing your home or thinking about building a new home and you know that solar is gonna be in your future, do not make any design decisions until you see this video because I'm gonna teach you some solar pro tips on how to build your house to optimize for solar. Stay tuned. <music> All right, folks, thank you so much for joining the channel. If you've been watching our channel long, you know that we specialize in solar education. We help customers uh, design their systems and build their systems. So if you're getting really good content and getting some value out of this, please subscribe. That really helps us out. Now, some of our customers, um, when they call us, they're actually not currently living in the home that they're thinking about going solar with. In fact, about 10% of our customers call us and they're just designing a new home or they've just moved into a new home. And so these are some solar pro tips if you are thinking of building a new home that you need to keep in mind because it's really gonna help reduce the cost of your system and optimize your system performance because you factored in some really good things to keep in mind when you are designing your new home. All right, folks, solar pro tip number one. Typically, when you just move into a home, you're not necessarily going to have the right amount of uh, baseline electric consumption to build an accurate scaled system, a system size that will actually cover and meet your energy goals. So I recommend as our solar pro tip number one, that you wait six months to a year so that you have an accurate amount of electric consumption history and data that we could use as a baseline to make sure that you're not overbuilding your system too much, which is is just going to cost you more money or that you're not underbuilding your system because we did not estimate uh, your consumption correctly and that ends up uh, leaving you with a system that's going to underperform and not meet your needs. So it's a great idea to make sure that you get an accurate amount of consumption data before you design your system. So we recommend at least six months to 12 months of actual electric usage before you decide to go solar. Now with going solar, you can wait six months, you can wait a year if you're just itching to get it in, then we have some other tips that we're gonna cover here. But I recommend since this 30% uh, federal tax credit is gonna be around for the next 10 years that you go ahead and wait. Really, it doesn't cost you anything to wait and then make sure that you can get the right system for your house at the best price possible. Solar pro tip number two, when you're designing your house, make sure that you have, if you're going with a roof mount system, that the largest facing part of your roof actually faces south. The reason is, is because south is the ideal location to have a roof and place a solar array roof mounted on top of that. S uh, sun exposure and sun optimization is best at the south facing. So if you have an option on which direction your roof is going to face, make sure that the uh, largest part of your roof is facing south. After that, we tend to look at the west side of the roof and then the east side of the roof, and you always stay away from the north side. The north side means that you end up spending way more money adding more panels and you don't get nearly amount of sun exposure that you would get if you designed at the other three directions of the roof. Solar pro tip number three, when you're designing your home, you could do a lot of the electrical work up front, which means that we don't need to come in as an installer and, and, and uh, charge you additional money for any electrical retrofitting that may need to, to happen. So when you're designing your home and you know you're going to go solar, go ahead and make sure that you have at least a 200 amp amp main breaker panel. That should provide you with uh, plenty of options and space to not only have all of the breakers that are going to manage your, your appliances and all your circuits, but it's also going to allow enough capacity for us to tie in your PV system. If you have a, a critical loads panel that you know that you're going to want, maybe you want to hook up a battery in the future, go ahead and during the construction of your home, make sure that they not only um, uh, design your home with a larger panel that's going to handle handle the, the PV that we're going to tie in, but if you have a critical loads panel that you know that you want just to control certain loads, maybe it's just your AC or your, your dishwasher or whatever loads that you want to have access to for backup power options or for time of use options that you're going to tie in a battery later, it's so much cheaper to design that sub panel in and that larger uh, master panel early on in the in the design phase and get it installed so that it's there and it's ready to go. And then as an installer, we just have to come in and tie in directly to those existing panels. And we don't need to charge you any additional money for any panel upgrades or any uh, critical load panels that we may have to add at a later date. 
Solar pro tip number four, if you think that you're gonna be adding a standby generator, like a Generac whole home standby generator, um, and you know that you have a natural gas line or a uh, propane tank, make sure that you pre-plumb as much as possible during the construction of your home so that we're not having to come in later and charge you all of those additional costs for trenching, for added plumbing, uh, to tie in a generator with um, uh, an automatic transfer switch, which ultimately ties into your main panel. It's it's best to just go through and design your house how you think you're going to want it set up. So if you want to add batteries, but you know you want to have your batteries on this part of the house, maybe you want your batteries in your garage, but your um, um, main panels on the outside of the house, then make sure that you plumb it and that you have all the conduit preset and designed in there so that you can go ahead and just uh, call us and then have an installer go in and then connect all of those things there. And we don't have to charge you for any retrofitting. And that also goes for for electric vehicle charges too. If you think that you're gonna have an, uh, an EV in the future and you wanna have charging capacity, make sure you get those outlets plumbed in, a, in you know ahead of time because it's much cheaper to get those things done during initial construction than it will be for us to go back and have to retrofit those things later. That can save you thousands of dollars in your install as well. Pro tip number five, this is often uh, uh, overlooked by homeowners that are designing their home. Not only are you having to factor in what are the different uh, things that you're going to have to have available there uh, for your ideal solar system and your battery and your generator set up in the actual design and construction of, of the home itself, but you want to factor in your landscaping design. When you're designing a home, you're often able to pick how you want your landscaping to look, where you want trees to be placed. Make sure that you're not placing trees that are going to grow over the next 10, 15, 15, 20 years and then get very large and cast nothing but shade on these solar arrays. So if you have an option during the design phase, make sure that you are very careful about where you choose to plant these really large growth trees so that you're not creating additional shade later on that's just going to cut your production, minimize the amount of solar that you're going to be able to produce and then use for net metering purposes or for battery charging. If we have too much shade being cast down the road, then that system that may work for you today isn't going to work for you in 15 years once those trees get large enough and start casting a lot of shade. That's just going to force you to go back, add more solar panels later to get you back up to that uh, target uh, PV production rate that you're looking for, and it's just going to end up costing you more money. So factoring in landscaping is a really good way to save you thousands of dollars later in lost potential production because of shade values. All right, folks, that's about wraps it up for today. Those are my top five solar tips if you're looking for a new construction home. Um, please reach out to us if you have questions and you're in the design phase and you want some consultation on uh, what types of decisions that you need to make as a homeowner when you're building your home to optimize for an electric vehicle charger or for your solar arrays later on or, or adding in a generator. Um, we, we are here. You could reach out to us. We can give you some consultation. And then once you get to that point to when you're ready to go solar, you know that it's going to work for you and you know that you will have saved thousands of dollars in the process and that's what we're here for. We're here to help you make the right choices to achieve your energy goals while also saving you as much money possible. Thank you so much for checking us out. Please email us, call us, check out our website and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you and God bless. Mm -hmm.